Hello and welcome to Business Daily on Trust Television, where we'll bring you all the updates in the world of business, finance, and policies that relate to the world of economy. I am Christiana Amodu Otinia. Thank you for joining in. The year 2022 has been an exceptional year, especially for the Nigerian economy and the global economy at large. And we will be chronicling major policies that we have seen come in the year 2022. We kick start, of course, we kick start with the monetary policy angle of the Nigerian government. We'll be looking at the issues that have come out from NPC meetings in the year 2022 and key policy decisions that we have seen the NPC in Nigeria enacted. I will be joined by the Director of Monetary Policy Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Dr. Hassan Mahmoud. He will be joining me to speak to some of these issues and also look at probably what will be the outlook for the new year for the monetary policy. What should Nigerians expect? What should those that monitor the economy expect? So it promises to be a pact program. Central bankers across the world stayed on the path of tightening for the year 2022. And this is as a result of looking at reigning in inflation. For so, for so many people, inflation was the game changer for the year 2022. So Dr. Hassan Mahmoud will be joining me and he will be speaking to some of these decisions we have seen happen in the year 2022 and what to expect probably from the monetary policy and the CBN as we enter into the new year. Don't forget, you can always get all the updates you need from us on Business Daily, where money matters matter. I'll take a short break. When I return, we'll get straight into the conversation. Please stay with us. Documenting the Nigerian story.
Welcome back and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. Like I mentioned before, we went on that short break. Our focus today will be on monetary policies and some of the decisions we saw coming from the MPC in the year 2022. I'm being joined by Dr. Ahsan Mahmoud, the Director of Monetary Policy Department of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He's joining us virtually. Welcome to the program, Doctor. Yeah, good morning and nice to be here. Doctor, I want you to begin with appraising the monetary policy journey that we have seen in the year 2022. It's best to hear from the horse's mouth. So I want to hear your thoughts, basically. Appraise the journey so far. Um, I will start by saying the journey was not a pleasant one. Um, the monetary policy journey in the last 12 months, let me say, has been quite turbulent. And this is not unique to Nigeria, it's unique to the entire world. Um, the scene with monetary policy stand scene was besieged by some three key major uh, global developments. One was the heightened inflation all over the world. Uh, two was the Russian Ukraine one that came in. And one more specific Nigeria was around oil prices and development around the oil export. So you see, then you have other issues that are silent a bit about COVID because COVID has, uh, was more severe in 2020, 2021, but we still have some uh, lingering effect of that, which is feeding into those lockdowns and all the policy responses to COVID led to the, the crisis we saw the supplies change to inflation and that will mean that monetary policy will need to uh, work towards fighting inflation uh, curtailing capital flow reversals uh, ensuring there's a sustainable growth in terms of uh, gdp growth and employment and stability around the exchange rate um, the responses to this uh, major key mandates of the central bank were really troubled by this major global development. Domestically, we also had uh, issues around inflation. Inflation in Nigeria has been going on month on month for over close to two years now. Oil prices going down, oil revenue inflows going down, government earnings going down significantly. Uh, coupled with the fact that we are still paying subsidy on those lean uh, revenue debt build up in the domestic economy, uh, job losses following the COVID-19 have not been regained, uh, climate supply and production that is also feeding into prices. So you see, you know, a lot of things, the crisis in the capital market, the long end of the market, asset price crash. Uh, the market is still bearish, both capital, uh, market capitalization, all share index are going down. We see what you call producers managers index is also below the, the threshold, which is a 50 index point. Uh, sentiments around the performance of the economy was also low, given all this uh, development. So you see a lot of what we call headwinds that uh, are really impacting on the economy and the central bank or monetary authority need to play within this space. Um, the journey for the monetary authority is one, to tame the inflation they needed to tighten. So in the last period that I've mentioned, the central bank has tightened uh, four times, almost 550 basis points. And uh, we're doing 16.5 uh, uh, MPR, monetary policy rate now. This is in the face of an inflation rate that is still above 20%. Mm -hmm. Those uh, May, May, June, July, August, we saw inflation number month on month going up to close to 100 basis points. Um, since we've started tightening, we've seen that coming on month on month to 30 basis points, less than 20 to 30 basis points, uh, adapter, including the last one that we just that moved the inflation number to, to 21.34. Yeah. We had 21.09. And so you see the movement has, has been month on month, 
But that tightening is also coming in the face of tightening that central monetary policy authority is also doing in the banking system. So heightening the uh, monetary policy rate and also increasing the capital uh, cash reserve requirement, the CRR. So uh, those two tightenings were built on the fact that, yes, the inflation number, the, the inflationary trend also has uh, a kind of monetary phenomenon in it because there was this excess demand that came following the interventions and the stimulus packages that were done globally and are also done domestically. Uh, don't forget that central bank did intervention, the fiscal authority did it. Dr. 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 Affected Mamou. money supply monetary policy. Doctor, uh, like uh, this is really a whole a whole journey that you have chronicled for us on the program. And like you have said, the journey was not so pleasant for the monetary yeah. authorities. I know we saw we saw the tightening started at about in May when inflation started becoming a little bit out of control. Now, Doctor, I want you to respond to there, there have been postulations that inflation has be, terming inflation has become so difficult or inflation has become so stubborn. Because we see that the monetary poor authorities have been aggressive trying to rein in inflation through its tightening stance. It was just the last meeting for the year. We saw the governor said, okay, we are treading the part of moderation now, but it is still important to bring inflation down. Did, did the tightening really achieve the results? Many factors. What is important in terms of addressing inflation is to first identify what are the factors driving the inflation. Uh, diverse views around what are the key factors driving inflation among the general public. From the side of the central bank, we're focused and we're, we're, we're certain to identify the drivers of inflation. One, we know there are legacy structural issues which affect supply side into the inflation. Inflation is the prices are determined by demand and supply. Mm -hmm. So you look at the demand side, what is the demand pool, inflation, what are the supply push uh, inflation factor? From the supply side, we see issues around structural phenomena, structural factors, which include things that are more or less long term, things that are more or less uh, fundamental for supply chain, you know, smoothly. Issues around roads, security, infrastructure, power, all those are structural issues yeah. that are affecting the supply side. Because, you know, power uh, shortages apply manufacturing production, bad roads and uh, security challenges affect food production, agriculture, and all those are structural issues. Um, you now come to the demand side. When there's, you know, the GDP numbers are very low, unemployment is high, so you see people don't have the resources to buy things and that subdues uh, uh, demand in that space, the people that supply cannot be able to you know, clear their inventories. You see that you know bringing down prices. But when on the opposite happens, mm. when there are funds and there are injections in the economy, and that demands build up above the supply that is this, the, the economy is, is able to you know absorb or the productivity of the economy. You see that you know pulling the demand up. We had witnessed that too because of those injections that I mentioned. So central bank focus was how do we tame or moderate this demand side, because that is where traditional bank tools work anyway. Yeah. Uh, the supply side are more of physical and you know governance issues that will, that will push that up. So on the demand side, how do we tame this demand and also ensure that we push the supply side to meet up with this demand to have an equilibrium price that is stable? And that involves you know the tightening that we did because yeah. we felt. Uh, there was what we call the pent up demand, you know, built up demand because supply could not meet up. You know, everybody is, you know, you can see the prices going up. If you moderate that demand side, then you start seeing you meeting up with supply that the economy can absorb. So the measures we did for tightening were yeah. largely to address those demand side. demand side. The supply side issues are things we did around intervention, agricultural yeah. co-borrowers, uh, targeted credit facilities, things to the power sector, things to uh, also help in terms of security issues. So both sides were also playing at. The effect of this demand management is already showing, and that's what I said, month on month, in the last three months, yeah. you will see that inflation numbers growth it's not. It's still high and yeah. it's still great, but the rate of growth is is slowing. Lower pace. 
which is which is yes so hopefully uh, monetary policy also has a lag you know you, you expect six to eight months before you start seeing you know significant impact of the policies that that you take because we Doctor, I also want you to, Doctor, I also want you to respond to some of the policies, especially as it relates to building a budding cashless economy in Nigeria, and that we saw the CBN governor announcing the the, the 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 memo that came out, especially as it relates to the cash withdrawal limits. We have we have we have this except of Nigerians reacting or to to that 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 policy. Let's take a listen, then we'll come back to just have your response. Policy entails. Youth population in Makudi share the views of many Nigerians across the nation. The policy is going to be of more harm to the low or poor masses in the society. If there is a way they can do this, that they won't be able to use a percentage, like there's no need of removing percentage from money. If I plan to withdraw more than 20,000, it wouldn't affect me. I think it should be actually nice. Not good for, this, for the society. Was okay. especially now come to think of it, why would they say the least you can withdraw in a PS is twenty thousand is twenty thousand naira? If you should withdraw more than that, there will be deduction of five to ten percent. That is absolutely wrong. They made a case for people who live in hinterlands and do not have access to banks and the internet for transactions. This segment of the youth felt the CBM may not have noticed the majority of Nigerians are still not conversant with ICT and yet transacting hundreds of thousands on daily basis. It doesn't favor the common man at all. And I want to rephrase my statement. This is the highest level of um, maltreatment and frustration to the common man. It has its disadvantage as during, as in a case of urgency, um, there won't be enough or sufficient money in availability and coming to the grassroots, which is the normal uh, for the, the 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 mass, the poor people, if 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 you have an urgent need to attend to, and the only amount you can withdraw a day in, in your ATM or post of sale is is is, is twenty thousand. They appreciate the intervention of the National Assembly and called on the CBN not to add to the woes of the masses of this country. But I see the policy is too stringent to the citizens. But there should be a kind of a kind of levity, a kind of uh, a soft ground that the government should give, especially the less privileged. People that are less privileged, that are open accounts, does not have much money in their accounts. And then if they are going to withdraw in case of uh, maybe they have an emergency, Nigerians from Benue State there speaking to the cash withdrawal limit that we saw coming from the Central Bank of Nigeria. And also these issues are to promote cashless policy in Nigeria to ensure that more Nigerians use other forms of doing transactions as opposed to having just raw cash. I want to, I still have Dr. Hassan Mahmoud with me, the Director, Monetary Policy Department at the Central Bank of Nigeria. Doctor, what kind of reassurance do you want to give to these Nigerians that have spoken at this time, especially as it, re as it regards the cash withdrawal limits? Um, thank you very much. I, I think it's, it's important I emphasize that we're really, really concerned about how Nigerians feel. We don't want uh, monetary policy to be inimical to the uh, monetary policy to be positively impactful on Nigerians because monetary policy is for Nigerians. So we're, we're concerned. We take records of all these uh, issues that come up, uh, but we also try to make a lot of sensitization so that people will understand where Central Bank is coming from and why Central Bank is doing what it's doing. One important thing I must emphasize is, you see, um, we talk of the poor, the poor, the poor people. It's, it's very difficult to define the poor in this context. Um, you see uh, poor in terms of access to finance or literacy or poor in terms of income level because uh, a lot of the people we talk about being poor, graduates that don't have jobs and need to do some things. If you go to the trader sites, you know, those that do, you know, kind of petrol trading, SMEs and or just market traders and stuff like that, 
a lot of this agent banking units around them. A lot of these people have phones. And we have created so much, you know, the payment system of, of Nigeria, so, so much evolved that you can do a lot of transactions using your phone, you know, by, and you don't need a smartphone to do those things. You don't need internet to do those things. You can transfer money with what you call the USS code. Yeah. You know, banks will tell you, dial star, this, 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 hash, put the money you want, you send it. We use it to buy credit on our phone. We use it to send money to people. Uh, people that sell things in the market, many of them have bank accounts. You can always transform. So what we're saying is that there's a lot of investment that are going into this cashless policy. We know the, the dangers of cash. Apart from the security issues that are around cash, we also, the central bank also incur a lot of cost in terms of managing cash, in the, including managing liquidity. Apart from managing the currency itself, you also manage, I spoke about factors that are driving inflation, and one of them was excess liquidity in the system. Those excess liquidity for us to mop it up, we pay money to banks to hold to some certain instruments and pull up the money from the bank accounts, from the bank uh, deposit vault, and bring them to the central bank vault to sterilize it from the economy. Okay. Those Doctor, monies that Doctor, we pay for them are supposed me. to be revenue that will go to the to the government. Doctor, so if, if we can curtail, the if time, we can curtail the time that, is very fast against us. But I'm glad that okay. you have stated that the CBN is taking what Nigerians have said into yeah. cognizance. So thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Hassan Mahmoud, Director, Monetary Policy Department. He joined us virtually today from the United Kingdom. Thank you for your time today, Doctor. Thank you very much for having me. And that's where we call it a wrap for the program today. Thank you for investing your time with us on the program. Don't forget, you can catch up on all you need to know on our social media platforms on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Go to YouTube and punch on the subscribe button. I am Christiana Amodu Otinya. Thank you for joining in and continue to stay safe.